Hi, my name is Mahmoud Al Nasri. I'm a pavement design manager with Talmark. In this presentation, we will discuss the principles of pavement design. We'll start off with understanding what is the main function of the pavement, then how is the pavement designed. After that, what are the layers in the pavement? Following this, what are the different types of the pavement? And then we will see what are the different methods in the industry for designing the pavement, focusing mainly on the analytical pavement design method. Finally, we will introduce the LT single layer tarmac solution. So to start with, what is pavement design? The main objective of the pavement design is to provide a structure that is able to distribute the load safely to the underlying subgrade. So if you have two pavements, one is weak and the other is strong, and we apply loadings on these pavements. For the weak pavement, the high stresses will be generated in the subgrade due to the poor spreading ability of the pavement, resulting in damages in the subgrade and consequently on the pavement itself. On the other hand, a strong pavement material will distribute the load safely to the underlying subgrade, resulting in very low stresses and intacted subgrade. So this is the main function of the pavement, which is distributing the load safely to the underlying subgrade, and in addition to that, to provide riding quality. So how can we do the design? For the pavement design, there are two main parameters that can we change. First of all, the pavement thickness, how much thickness you would put in your layers. And secondly, what are the material properties that will be put in each layer? So from these two parameters, we can perform alternative designs depending on the thickness and the material properties. Let's go on to the pavement layers. Before any design or any construction, there will be an existing soil termed in the pavement design as the subgrade. The first layer in terms of pavement is the foundation, which can be either subbase alone or subbase with a capping. The foundation is the platform upon which more expensive layer will be put on top of it, and its main function to distribute the load safely to the subgrade without causing any damage, as well as providing a drainage path. On top of the foundation is the base. In fact, the base is the main structural element or layer in the pavement. Its main function is to distribute the load safely to the underlying layers without causing any damage. It can consist of one or two different material. On top of that is the surfacing. The surface function is to provide riding quality as a main objective, and secondly, also to distribute the load partially safe, safely to the underlying layers. So these are the three different layers in the pavement, the foundation, the base, and the surfacing. Depending on the material that we put in each layer, this will generate different types of pavements. The two main types of the pavements, known as flexible and rigid. If we focus on the flexible part, the first one is known as the fully flexible option. In this option, in the, sub, in the foundation would be the material either unbound material, aggregates or hydraulic bound material. The base and the surfacing will have an asphalt material on it. This is the fully flexible option. 
The second type is the flexible composite. Here, the foundation is the same as the fully flexible, which will be either unbound or hydraulic bound material. The main difference comes in the base. The base will be either fully hydraulic bound material or consisting of hydraulic bound material and asphalt. The surfacing is the same as the fully flexible, which will be an asphalt. The second main type is the rigid, and it comes from the concrete, this property rigid. The first type is the continuously reinforced concrete pavement or continuously reinforced concrete base. Here, the base would be of concrete of these types. The foundation would be hydraulic bound material, while the surfacing is of asphalt to provide riding quality. The final type, which is the URC, unreinforced jointed concrete, or JRC, jointed reinforced concrete. And here, the concrete actually extends from the base to the surfacing, i.e. the concrete surfacing is suitable for riding quality. So these are the four main types in the pavement industry. Moving on, in terms of the design, there are different methods, mainly empirical or analytical. Historically, empirical methods um, were first introduced and they are based on experiences and experiments, while the analytical pavement design is based on the calculation of the actual stresses and strains in the pavement itself. Whether it's empirical or analytical, the design philosophy for the pavement design are based on against or against two deterioration mechanisms. The first one is cracking, which can appear either on the surface, known as surface cracking, uh, due to the oxidation of the bitumen on the surface. This is known as or classified as thermal cracking. The second type of cracking um, is the fatigue, which is based on the high um, tensile strain at the bottom of the base. The one, the first one that is concerned with the design philosophy is the fatigue cracking based on the loading on the pavement at the base. The second deterioration mechanism um, the design philosophy is based on is rotting, which is the accumulation of the strain due to the repeated loading on the pavement, which results in thinner thickness at some section of the road. And the rotting can be classified as non-structural rotting, which is limited to the surfacing, or when the rotting extends to the lower layers, it is known as structural rotting. The design philosophy is based against the structural rotting, which extend to the below surfaces. So focusing on the analytical pavement design. So what is the analytical pavement design? Basically, uh, the design is based on the multi-layer linear elastic theory. What does this theory say? It is based on assumption that the material in each layer is isotropic, homogeneous, linear, and elastic. In reality, this is not true, but this is the to simplify the complexity of the materials in the pavements. The second assumption is the horizontal extent is infinite. And finally, the thicknesses of the layer of, of, of the materials in each layer is uniform. So pavements can be modeled using the multi-layer linear elastic theory. From there, you assign or we assume different thicknesses, elastic modulus and poison ratio for each layer. And as we said previously, there are different materials, including asphalt, concrete, and hydraulic bound material with different stiffnesses or elastic modulus and poison ratio. So if we assign for each layer, um, a value of thickness, elastic modulus, and poison ratio. There are a number of softwares available in the market to calculate the stresses and the strains between 
in, in the layer at any location, including the visor developed by Shell. I also mentioned to forget, we also assume that there is a full bond between the layers. So once we assign values for each layer, including thickness, elastic modulus, and poison ratio, using the software to run the analytical pavement design, we can determine exactly how much are the stresses and the strains in any location. So the analytical pavement design requires empirical performance model calibrated fatigue and deformation lines, which relate the critical stresses and strain within the pavement structure to an allowable number of load applications, which is known as the pavement life. Historically in the UK, this was used by the TRL 1132, um, developed by the Transportation Research Laboratory, and it provides equations to determine how much design life in terms of traffic can be carried out. So from the software, we can get the horizontal and tensile strain at the bottom of the base or the asphalt and the vertical compressive strain on top of the subgrade. From these two values, we can insert them to the equations provided in the TRL1132 and determine how much design life can be acquired, depending on the thicknesses and the stiffnesses applied. So if what if we found that the desired life is is, is higher than what is uh, provided by the model, then we can either change the material in the layers or increase the thicknesses. So how this is how the analytical pavement design is run. Moving on, the TRL released the TRL report 615, which is now adopted by the UK analytical pavement design. Here, the four foundation classes uh, has been in, uh, have been introduced, uh, starting from class one, above 50, uh, which, which has a 50 or more MPA surface modulus. Class two foundation, which has above 100 MPA, class three above 200 MPA, and finally, class four above 400 MPA. The provision of these four classes made the previous requirement of the determination of the strain or the stresses at the top of the subgrade redundant and only required now to determine the horizontal tensile stress or strain at the bottom of the base. So once we have these numbers, then we can go back to the TRL615, which provides the equation required to, to, to calculate your design life. This is in a simple way, the analytical pavement design. The Thermac solution for single layer. Traditionally in the UK, the surfacing comprises of binder cores and a surface cores, usually at 60 mm or and 40 mm respectively. Tarmac has developed a new solution, which is called the Altis single layer, that can compensate for both the 40 and 60, i.e. 100 mil layer with a lower thickness. So equivalent to the surfacing and the binder um, courses, Tarmac has developed a solution that can compensate for these two, la two layers with only single layer with a reduced thickness. It applies for both either new or rehabilitation of existing pavement. Routinely here in the UK, the surface and the binder cost, uh, binder costs are replaced and for the maintenance and Tarmac can provide a solution for a single layer that can reduce, not only reduce the thickness required for the surfacing, but also provide a reduction in the cost as well as a reduction in the time or closure of the road. And this was developed based on different principles, including the Odimark uh, principle that combines the elastic uh, modulus and the thickness into one single layer, effective layer, using the TRL615 as well as Pizar software as a solution. 
in summary, yes, we do apply the design, but we also here in Tarmac consider different variables. We consider the cost, whether it's the cost of the material or the cost of the construction. We take into consideration sustainability, the social, economical and environmental impacts of the design. Health and safety comes as a priority. Innovations, including any new development in the market, we consider it safely, uh, we consider it very much, including the value engineering as we do. Thank you very much for listening and welcome.